on behalf of power grid i would like to welcome all the analyst all the investors my colleagues thank you for coming here and showing faith in power grid <coughs> uh, we are committed for the growth of the company and uh, the way we have been working for last 30 years we will continue to grow like that for the service of the nation it is my first uh, uh, investors meet so uh, i can assure you that the way uh, things were progressing in power grid it will continue with the same momentum even we will try to do better regarding this uh, results uh, for quarter 3 20 uh, fy24 i will give brief on the highlights of uh, uh, our financial performance next my presentation will cover uh, power grid overview major highlights performance highlights growth outlook and awards and recognition what we have earned in fy24 in last 10 months as you know friends we are a maharatna company third largest cpsc gross block wise we have pan india presence our interconnection with our national uh, international borders like bangladesh bhutan and nepal we have connected transmission network of about 4000 megawatt we have footprints in 23 countries we have 45 subsidiaries in terms of uh, spvs is mainly for tbcb companies and 12 joint venture companies with various uh, companies like NETC, Sikkim, Urja, and other companies. Four associates. That includes PG Invit companies. Then uh, our credit rating has been very good. As per Standard and Poor, it is triple B minus. And domestic also, it is one of the best. We have used. transmission network our network is one of the largest in the world almost 1490 transmission lines are there we have 276 substations and transformation capacity is over 5 lakh mva interregional capacity is uh, uh, 97000 megawatt that means power generated anywhere in the country be it arunachal pradesh be it kerala it can be transmitted to any other part of the country and uh, we have been maintaining our transmission system availability over 99.75 this year so far it is 99.86% and our availability and reliability is one of the best in the world we have been continuously benchmarked by international agencies in operations and maintenance in first quadrant and we are comparable with best utilities in the world we have 18 hvdc substations 62 uh, ac substation 765 kv 165 numbers of 400 kv statcom and svc which are mainly for stabilization of the grid we have 20 numbers because of lot of renewables are there we need some stabilizing elements to take care voltage frequency and other parameters gis substations uh, especially in uh, urban areas we have 62 numbers and uh, transmission line towers it is close to 300000 towers we have all over the country 
transformers and reactors capacities uh, uh, sorry numbers are 3600 regarding our uh, uh, recent uh, performance in tbcb projects we are successful in six ists tbcb projects recently in quarter 3 like wataman in gujarat kopal 2 gadak 2 in karnataka bikaner 3 nimrana in uh, 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 rajasthan uh, then nimrana to bareilly between rajasthan and up sikar khetri bidar transmission limited and city cost for uh, this was about 20000 crores and annual tariff is 1636 in fy24 in last 9 months we have uh, uh, won projects worth 26000 crores with annual tariff of 2340 crores our the percentage of winability is almost 67% tariff wise so we in last one year we have uh, uh, won many projects and in days to come this will continue especially in esg that is the focus of government of india and worldwide transition to low carbon operations we have successfully commissioned one uh, 132 kv to 20 mvr bus reactor from the synthetic oil to natural oil and it was commissioned for the first time in india on december 1st to 2023 so it is a great initiative towards net zero or low carbon operations we are committed to take more initiatives especially for replacement of sfcs gas in switch gears in gis so that our ecological footprints are increased as far as automation and uh, control better control of our grid our lab at manesar partech lab it has been internationally recognized recently and will be uh, we are the sec second uh, se second company to be accredited for this uh, uh, 61850 it will play a key role in identifying and eliminating interoperability issues among various devices like we have n number of uh, devices of different makes so all devices should communicate from one device to another device so that controls are better so this lab will help in a big way to test all the devices whether they are communicating with the different devices or not so it is a very good step in successful or in reliable operation of the grid right there has been continuous uh, demand or requirement for integration of various communication protocols of different makes so we have successfully implemented unms which covers almost 1 lakh kilometer of fiber network it is very critical for controlling and monitoring our transmission assets of ists and intra state we have signed recently agreement with ladakh for for loads reduction under rdss for leh and kargil creation of distribution system in border areas of ladakh and project cost which has been signed with ladakh in last uh, quarter is 68862 crores on project execution front we have added 3100 mva transformation capacity one number uh, fatehgarh 3 pulling station has been commissioned and 834 circuit kilometer of transmission line has been added in the network 
transformers at Fatehgarh 2 and 6 ICTs at Fatehgarh 2, Fatehgarh 3, Palgar, Tuti Korin and Kurukshetra have been added. We have added very important transmission link in northeastern region that is Lower Subansri to Vishwanath Charyali. So once the Lower Subansri project is commissioned, so it can be successfully evacuated from Arunachal Pradesh to rest of the country because it will come to Vishwanath Charyali. From Vishwanath Charyali, power can be transmitted through HVDC, BNC Agra to Agra. Then from Agra, it can come to Delhi, NCR and other areas. Our capex in uh, Q3 is uh, on console basis it is 3,444. For 9 months it is 7,690. And capitalization is uh, 5,780. For Q3 it is 1,784. We are uh, hopeful that we will, uh, this capex will be almost 10,000 uh, 10, crore plus in uh, 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 next two uh, months and uh, capitalization will be of the order of 8000 to 8500 crores. As I was telling that operational performance is one of the best in the world. We have been maintaining 99.86% in this financial year. Last year uh, in, in nine months it was 99.81. And our tripping is continuously uh, decreasing. Last time we had 0.27 trippings per line in uh, uh, this FY23. So far we are 0.22 trippings per line. That means almost uh, four out of four lines, only one line trips in a year. So which is a very good uh, uh, indication of the reliability and availability of our, tra of our transmission network. Without digital technologies, without, without digit, digitization of our system, we, we are not, will not be able to maintain such huge system, transmission network in various parts of the country. So we have taken steps for digitization of data, digitization of the process and digital transformation. The three areas we have covered like digitization if we, I uh, talk about digitization. So we are using SAP for enterprise asset management. Then remote acquisition of the data for NTMC. We have PMU and WAMS. Then PG Darpan is the da uh, data uh, capturing app for uh, transmission line monitoring. Then we are in, uh, now starting QR based data uh, uh, management system of our uh, assets. In digitization, the palms, asset health indexing, drone based patrolling, then Amrit for transmission asset management, augmented reality for substation maintenance. We are having augmented reality based headgears. Then development of business dashboards for various applications. Then predictive outage management. We have uh, artificial based uh, defect identification application for transmission line. Like through a drone, we capture the data of transmission line tower, the transmission line hardwares, and automatically the data or uh, uh, is fed in the software and through artificial intelligence, we are able to detect the defects in the transmission uh, line, towers and various parts of the network. We have created digital substations at Malair Kotla, Chandigarh. We are in the process of digitization of Navsari station from the day one. And a brownfield project of Kanpur. We are, we, we are going to convert that station to digital substation. Then digital worker has been implemented for maintenance of uh, various equipments. 
deployment of asset health management then digital twins for transmission line and transformers are being developed for so that data and process of various uh, applications can be maximized and the requirement of human being or human efforts can be minimized as i was telling that we have almost 290000 towers 3600 uh, transformers almost uh, 10000 circuit breakers 20000 cts almost 14000 cvts 12000 surge arresters so put together we have almost 400000 equipments and for monitoring of each equipment we require almost uh, 30 to 40 data points if we have to monitor each and every equipment so the data points will be in millions so manually it is not possible so we have to go for digitization for which your company is taking proactive actions so that the efficiency and uh, reliability of system can be further improved as i was telling that we are using drones remote operations of all stations is being done digital substations udan asset management dashboards the management can see where are the critical assets are there which assets are out of service so those details are available on the dashboard the center of excellence the relays or ids are being controlled and monitored from uh, centralized uh, cent control center at Manesar. We have recently developed center of excellence for cyber security at ISC Bangalore. So we, we are taking various actions using various technologies. The financial performance uh, income uh, in quarter 3 is 11,468 crores as compared to 11,281 last year. PAT is 3,970 as compared to 3,702. On console basis, income is 11,820 and PAT is 4,028 crores. For uh, 9 months, FY24, it is 33,000 on standalone basis and uh, PAT is 11,347. On console basis, 34,000 crores and the PAT is 11,407 crores. These are the details of uh, uh, various heads like transmission charges, consultancy charges, this is a breakup of the our income and the profit details. Next. This is on console basis that uh, re uh, revenue for 9 months 34,000 and uh, profit is uh, 4,000 crores. So we are able to maintain a bit of uh, 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 80 plus percent uh, and profit after tax 11,097 and for uh, sorry 11,407 and uh, for Q3 4,028. We have uh, total gross fixed assets almost 2,74,000 crores, capital work in progress almost 16,600 crores, we have loan uh, debt of 1,19,000 which has reduced from 1,28,000 to 1,19,000, earning per share and, and net worth is 87,194 as against 82,226 last year and earning per share uh, for uh, 9 months it is 12.26 as compared to 11.93 uh, as on 31-12-22 uh, last year and 31-12-23 uh, to 12.26. Debt e equity ratio has improved 58 to 42 as compared to 61-39 last year. Return on net worth is uh, maintained at 13.08 percent as compared to 13.50 uh, percent last year. These are some uh, this key financial informations like uh, we have uh, income for previous periods in uh, Q3 F uh, FY24 237 interest on differential tariff 
and these details are uh, there which uh, because of that there is a change in our uh, revenue and profit next in consultancy we have uh, earned uh, uh, this domestic and international clients uh, almost 116 crores uh, projects we have won one international uh, assignment in uh, uganda yeah uganda additional scope for consultancy of project management then we have 17 ongoing international assignments four new domestic assignments have been won there are 78 ongoing domestic assignments especially in transmission sub transmission rural electrification load dispatch and communication smart grid energy efficiency and sustainable development and these are the areas where we are working uh the power tel tele services the our telecom business has been hived off it uh, we have now se uh, separate subsidiary called uh, power tel and uh, from 1st october 23 it has it is working separately now the first 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 quarter income is 201 crores we have added 17 new customers 362 crores uh, multiple order uh, received then 3000 locations pan india network we have uh, in uh, uh, telecom uh, the fiber network is more than 100000 kilometers our backbone availability of our fiber is almost 100% these are the commercial performance uh, the we uh, we have uh, more than 45 days is 3191 crores in q3 fy23 for uh, like these are details of our uh, receivables main uh, the state is basically tnb and uh, tenjedco we have almost 2200 crores and then jnk mp and up the bhavini uh, uh, the uh, this issue is resolved and now they are uh, ready to pay all uh, arrears in installments so that issue will, will get this revenues very shortly as far as our outlook for uh, uh, next uh, uh, few years we have work in hand as on today 77770 crores out of which uh, we have ongoing 11450 crores rtm and a new rtm 24800 crores which includes lay uh, cathal uh, hvdc link of 20000 plus and other projects one through tbcb to 41450 crores so put together we have 77770 crores work in hand the projects other than hvdc are to be executed in next 2 two, two and 2 two and a half years so that means almost 55000 crores projects we, we capex has to be added in next 2 years or 2 and a half years so our outlook is bright we are thinking uh, we, we are considering that uh, we we had target of uh, capex 8800 uh, crores so by january 24 we have already achieved almost 8700 crores so in fy24 we are hopeful that we will achieve 10000 crore plus capex and in next uh, financial F fy25 we uh, are hopeful that we will achieve 15000 crore plus we will be close to 2 billion dollar next year so uh, outlook is good maybe uh, in fy26 still capex will be 20000 plus it will be close to 3 billion dollar next yeah if we uh, look uh, uh, this outlook up to 2032 we have interstate uh, uh, intrastate cross border if we add all the sectors and possible uh, uh, capex so we are uh, touching somewhere 200000 plus capex in the next 8 7 to 8 years so every year 
there will be at least 20 to 25,000 crores capex will be there on an average. So it's sometimes it may be 15,000, sometimes it may be 30,000 crores depending on the project timeline. Regarding uh, this green uh, greener tomorrow, we have already committed uh, last time also we told that 50% electricity we will be consuming from renewable sources by 2025, net water positive by 2030, and then zero waste to landfill status by 2030, net zero we are targeting by 2047. And uh, for this 50% uh, electricity, we have already started constructing 85 megawatt Nagda solar plant, which is expected to come in third quarter of the year, maybe somewhere in August or September. And after that, it will start uh, uh, generating renewable power, which can be consumed uh, as a captive use for power grid. Awards and accolades for uh, uh, we got uh, this uh, win, uh, corporate impact targeted program award for improving rural livelihoods and protecting environment through farmer centering integrated watershed management in Odisha, Kalahandi. Next. In CSR again, uh, this was on uh, Vishram Sadhan at Ames. We got this, these awards in uh, 2023. Then uh, for digital initiatives, especially in Puglur Tirshur, we got this award, Scotch Gold Award 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, we express our sincere thanks to CMD for sharing the prowess and the performance of the company in preceding quarter and the nine months. His uh, commitment to take the company to the newer heights by way of presenting the outlook and the future path. And not only that, he has also expressed his commitment towards the inclusive growth and taking the society along with the mission to achieve the commercial growth as well. So uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, now uh, I request my guest, the session is open for interactive uh, session with our management. Please. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, one small announcement yeah. over here. Please introduce yourself and your uh, company so that you know we could register that. Sir, I'm Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. My question is on sir, total industry capex. According to NEP, the number is 4.8 trillion for FY22 to FY27, which comprises of 3.1 trillion of interstate capex and 1.7 trillion of intrastate capex. And our numbers are 10,000 crore, which we are talking about in FY24. Uh, so my question is, uh, are we under-investing in the, in the interstate and intrastate in past? And do you think, especially the intrastate, the numbers will go up substantially? And my uh, later question is, how do you reconcile this expenditure? OK. OK, thank you. Uh, as I have shown that we have um, almost 77,000 uh, work uh, crore worth uh, uh, projects in hand, almost 16,000 crores uh, work, uh, work in progress is there. So uh, the as per the earlier plan of CA, uh, 2 lakh 44,000 crore ISTS network was to be uh, is to be built out of which almost 96,000 crore worth projects have been already uh, awarded. Almost 84,000 crores worth projects are in pipeline, they are under bidding. And the balance 64,000 crore projects have are yet to be bid, they are yet to be floated. So in ISDS, definitely a roadmap is there. 
now uh, they are talking now three as you rightly mentioned that draft NEP is mentioning about three like ten thousand crores projects. So that means IESTS portion will further improve, and accordingly our uh, share will also increase. So now we are sh uh, uh, showing uh, say two hundred thousand plus crores in up to twenty thirty two. So it will further improve. As regards to intra-state, your concern is uh, uh, yes, we also agree with you that more focus is required unless until uh, intra-state transmission network is not there. The, so power to the consumer, there will be uh, challenges. But uh, I am sure that government of India and uh, uh, government of various states are taking necessary action to ensure that the once the uh, ISTS is ready, so in the same timeline, uh, intra-state transmission network will also be ready. As far as uh, you are uh, mentioning about uh, how we are going to achieve uh, that, if uh, like if we talk about uh, 15,000 or 20,000 capex. Our profit is uh, uh, say uh, 50, 14 to 15,000 crores and after dividend we have 5,000 to 6,000 crores uh, in hand for capex and considering 80 to 20 percent ratio of loan and equity. So we can very well uh, execute projects worth 30,000, 25 to 30,000 crore projects each year. So there will not be any problem in capex for power grid. My second question is, sir, uh, is there any risk to upside uh, on the capex number, which you have said 15,000 crore and 20,000 crore, given that the transmission bidding pipeline is 84,000 crore and is likely to close in the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah. And the other question is that, uh, what is the status of Leh Ladakh? No. Yeah, Leh Ladakh uh, is a uh, uh, project, very uh, strategic project, very important projects and uh, we, we have been uh, given on nomination basis by government of I India considering various uh, challenges in these, uh, this project because it is for the first time this project is being uh, 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 this executed at uh, the height of say 4500 meters or almost 5000 meters. So we are going for this uh, uh, front end engineering and design studies. We have already placed the order. It is almost uh, getting uh, over or getting uh, uh, completed by March 24. Based on this, we have to uh, finalize uh, detailed parameters of each and every equipment. So based on that, we are going to uh, place orders for feed tw uh, two and feed two is likely to take uh, maybe seven to eight months. M maximum by December 24, we will get outcome of 24. And by that time, we will have all the documents ready for tendering. So NIT should come in uh, January 25. By end of uh, March, we should be able to place the order. And from placing the order, maybe uh, five years is the timeline. So by 25, maybe I'm hopeful that by FI 30, the project should be a reality. As the upside risk to the capex numbers? Capex is uh, almost 22,000 crores. So my, my question is given that the transmission building pipeline, which is very high, and we need to complete most of the projects within two years. Yeah. So do you think the upside risk to the numbers which you have given to us, 20,000 crore in FY26? Yeah. That's yeah, so uh, this is as of the visibility as of now because we have to complete uh, this projects whatever we have in hand other than uh, Leh Ladakh which is a five years timeline. Balance projects we have to complete in next uh, up to maybe maximum 30 mi uh, months. So next year we are considering say 15,000 crores as of now visibility depending on the progress. But definitely we are committed to complete these projects by uh, within 30 months. So accordingly, capex will be increased in Thank a phased manner. Thank you, sir. Thank you for answering. Good morning, sir. This is uh, Shubhdeep from Navama. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, please. Yeah. 
so sir firstly uh, with regard to the nep number that you just mentioned the 3 lakh uh, 10000 crores of the interstate target now that would also include money that has been spent over fi 22 and 23 yeah so am i to understand that the overall number still remains at that 2.4 lakh crore the earlier cea guidance for the renewable capex which we had got last year so the numbers are roughly the same yeah no, uh, the earlier 2 uh, lakh 44,000, if I am correct, it uh, included the uh, projects, uh, it, uh, this 20 to 23 uh, projects also were there. So maybe these are the additional, like uh, what was happening. Earlier we were considering uh, storage as one of the options so that transmission evacuation network can be delayed. Now uh, you know that uh, battery storage has not come up in the way we expected. So for evacuation of 500 gigawatt, we have to plan additional transmission network. So it is because of those regions, the transmission network or ISTS network needs, needs to increase. So it is considering those additional transmission network required for evacuation of 500 gigawatt. Otherwise we were thinking that battery storage will be there and we, we may not require this much of transmission network. Understood. Uh, and so secondly, with regard to the uh, current ongoing TBCBs which are, you know, under bidding, I understand there are two projects under bidding. Now, in True. your opinion, these would enter the CAPEX phase by FY26, assuming that these get ordered out by FY25? Uh, you are talking about, if I am correct, uh, this Fatehpur Badla? Correct. And uh, Khawda to Nagpur? Correct. Yeah, uh, uh, like uh, if uh, uh, this especially Fatehpur to Badla should be uh, the uh, awarded within this financial year FY24. So maybe an, you consider six months for engineering and other activities. Maybe in last quarter of FY25, we should start uh, real capex when equipment starts coming and ground, uh, work at ground starts executing, execution. Understood. But these HVDC projects would again take more than like three or four years to execute? Uh, it will not be similar to Leh and uh, uh, Cathal uh, project, but uh, considering uh, constraint and limitation worldwide in supply chain, especially for HVDC project. The timeline which has been uh, considered for these projects is 48 months for uh, Pole 1, by Pole 1 and uh, uh, 54 months for by Pole 2. So maybe four and a half years total completion. Understood. So that would imply that uh, we will see probably faster commissioning of uh, projects that we have doing capex on over the next couple of years which are non hvdc yeah. and once we start executing the hvdc let's say starting fy 25 or 26 those would be slightly longer gestation yeah. in terms of the capitalization yeah perfect so that's it from my side thank you so thank you sumit kishore from access capital um, if, if you take your works in hand of uh, 777 billion and you mentioned 550 billion would be executed in 24 to 30 months and if I take your guidance so for FI 25, 26 CAPEX put together is 350 billion rupees versus uh, 550 billion. So once again, I think it's a bit, bit of a follow up, but uh, it seems that your numbers, uh, uh, you know, there are 26 months to go for uh, um, um, FI 26 to end and you will still be at 350 versus 550 that you need to do. Okay. You are right that uh, uh, as of now the visibility which we are seeing that for next uh, uh, FY25 or FY26 definitely we have to complete in uh, maybe maximum by FY27, mid FY27. So uh, maybe uh, 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 maybe after six months one, uh, once thing projects are better visible we can accordingly true up our uh, uh, this estimation. So when you say visibility, you mean the pre-engineering works and the yeah. design and which Sup could take more time uh, yeah. as per your estimate. Supply and progress at site. So uh, like uh, if I'm t uh, talking about $2 billion next year, it may be increased to uh, $2.5 billion depending on the progress and uh, ground reality. And on a related note, what would be your capitalization guidance for FI25 and 26 given the bunching up that will happen in CWIP? 
as i told fy uh, 24 it is somewhere about 8500 crores and uh, fy 25 it should be uh, about uh, 17 16 to 17000 crores okay the third question would be that uh, you no know, again with a 3.1 lakh crore ists capex over 22 to 27 yeah just the math you know fy 24 is ending three year period in this block is already ending yeah i think we will have to award projects first and then execute them. So for the country as a whole, the ISTS target appears a bit aggressive. And then the including the INSTS, it is 4.75 lakh crore. Mm. So appears like a very aggressive target because you'll have to award probably in the next few months to complete that over the next three years, right? Yeah. As you know, we have uh, already experience of executing uh, projects worth 25 to 30,000 uh, crore projects, maybe uh, uh, five years back or six years back. So execution should not be a challenge. There can be challenge uh, maybe for uh, supply of transformer, supply of GIS, for which government of India is uh, taking uh, necessary actions. We are in the process of de developing more vendors like uh, uh, at 220 kV level transformers, at 400 kV level transformers. So supply chain issue should not be a problem if we take these actions in future and we uh, uh, go for vendor development of more vendors are there in market. So vendors will be able to meet these requirements. But as of now, yes, you are right that there are there can be some challenges unless until we don't take any action for ensuring the problem uh, whether it is resolved or not thank you so much for answering my questions sir. hello thank you sir this is atul here from city research uh, sir my question is uh, on uh, crc regula draft regulations which have been proposed so what is your comment on the impact on power grid specifically with respect to the onm norms which have been proposed what could be the impact if these go through in the current form Yes, uh, draft regulation is uh, out and uh, we are discussing with CRC. There are uh, changes, especially if I talk of operation and maintenance charges, OM charges. Earlier, what was uh, the um, distribution? That 75% was towards substation and 25% OM cost was towards transmission line. So, based on the actual data, now it has changed 65% for transmission line and 35% for substation. Sorry, 65% uh, for transmission uh, substation and 35% for transmission line. So accordingly, transmission line charges have increased and uh, substation bay charges have reduced. But overall impact is not there. Total, we have calculated our OEM charges what we were getting before this uh, regulation 24-29 in 1924 how much we were getting they have added one more element reactor earlier we were not getting any OEM charge for reactors so reactor charges have been added per MVR similar to uh, transformer per MVA capacity like say 20 uh, uh, lakhs or so per MVA so those uh, have been added. So net impact is not there. Net impact is almost zero or we, we are going to get the same OEM charges which we were getting earlier. As regards to uh, ROE, yes, uh, they, uh, they have uh, uh, grandfathered 15.5% for the old assets and new assets, uh, the 15% is uh, indicated for the new projects commissioned after 1st April 24. But still we are discussing with the CRC and uh, discussions are going on and we are hopeful that the uh, whatever regulations and uh, the norms were there, they, they will continue. So there will not be any impact on power grid, revenue or profitability. And sir, my second question is on the TBCB project. So your market share has gone up to almost 60, 65% plus yeah. recently versus your long-term average of 40%. So what is driving this very sharp increase in your market share in the recent bids? Have you changed your bidding strategy or the competition has just vacated the space? So could you comment on that? Yes, you are right that uh, uh, in between uh, uh, two years or three years, uh, our uh, uh, percentage were less. 
uh, but still on uh, total capex basis uh, we uh, we have a share of almost 67% in last uh, 523 so earlier now we are more aggressive we, because we have to compete if we have to survive if we have to take care interest of our investors so definitely we have to uh, 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 growth has to be maintained so we we want that growth should be 7 to 8 percent or 9 percent so for achieving that we, we, we but still we are maintaining that our IRR should not be it may, we are targeting about 14 percent but we are ensuring that it is 11 percent or 12 percent okay thank you sir thanks a lot yeah hi sir uh, this is uh, here yeah this is Vinod from uh, BOB Capital uh, given the strong capex pipeline that you have uh, do you also have a parallel asset monetization program in place because the kind of equity requirement you would uh, need for these projects or would we see a reduction in dividend payout so that you can bolster your own cash flows yeah asset monetization as you you, you know that we we had uh, targets in last uh, two three years but uh, after this new nmp guidelines where the uh, that we are not able to we, we, we able to ownership transfer only rights transfer is possible so depending on our capex requirement we are doing securitization of our assets in last year we have done 5700 crores uh, uh, cap, uh, this loan we have taken through securitization uh, last year we have taken 3400 crores so in future also depending on our capex requirement through securitization we will be able to need, uh, match our requirements and balance will be from the profit so your dividend payout you plan to maintain where it is today a uh, dividend payout we yes we uh, plan to maintain that same level uh, the second thing i observed was uh, your cwp in console is almost twice your standalone but your entire debt is on the standalone books. So, are you not taking any debt on the JV? Which books uh, of the JV? Uh, I will request uh, Director of Finance to please. Yeah, normally we uh, take the loan in the books of power bid and then uh, we uh, give the debts to the SPVs and then we have a separate terms with them. So, normally we don't raise in the books of SPVs because the rate will be uh, very good if we raise from the name of uh, power grid. So that is why if you see always in the uh, console and uh, standalone there will be a same loans will be there. Almost all the loans will be in the name of uh, power grid and from here we will uh, online to SPVs. Yes, Thanks that answers my question. Last couple of questions if any. All right, I think we've had a very interactive session. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming over here. Um, please do uh, contact uh, the Power Grid Corporation if you have any further questions. The email ID is investors, with the plural S, investors at powergrid.in. Uh, and uh, you could also reach out to my colleagues from AdFactors PR for any further queries. We will try our level best to address them within the next 48 hours. Uh, the management of power grid is also available over here for, for interaction. I take this opportunity to once again thank you for taking out time, for being here and uh, coming up in such large numbers. Uh, I also thank the entire management of power grid corporation for organizing this uh, uh, investor meet for, for you and the analyst meet. And also the fact that they've addressed, uh, they've shared all the details about the projects, about the outlay, about the capex, about the vision and the mission and uh, if you've got any further queries you could uh, connect with them one on one and thank you for that there's lunch being served uh, it might take another five ten minutes to uh, lay it out uh, until then thank you once again thank you sirs <laughs>